Well, today's episode, we're going to have a three review. As you know, New Japan Pro Wrestling continues more with the New Year's Golden Series featuring the main event, the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship between Master Watto and, of course, the champion, El Desperado. And, of course, AEW Dynamite has some interesting matches. We've got, of course, the AEW Tag Team titles on the line in the main event, but we also got Britt Baker being faced by Robin Renegade. Hook challenged the mystery prize student by QT Marshall and many other things taking place. And, of course, we cannot forget 205 Live and, of course, some news updates coming from both Pro Wrestling Noah and Stardom. So, let's get ready for another episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Are you ready? Welcome everybody to the Lead at Russell Zone, all things that it's pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jira right here. So, let's begin with New Japan Pro Wrestling with more on the New Year's Golden Series. Opening match was more like a dark match. We got young line Rohi Oiwa taking on the veteran. Toma Akihamna. Now, as you guys know, this is a very good teachable moment for the young line. But however, it became a very extreme teachable moment where Hamna actually applied the Boston Crab on him, forcing him to tap out. So hope he took some notes on that. Next up, we got the battle of, of course, the junior heavyweights. We got Suzuki Goon, consistent of Doiki, Kanemaru. And, of course, taking on LIJ's Bushi and Hermu. Now, as you know, these guys are way too familiarized with each other many times over. But, of course, you cannot forget the dirty tactics from Suzuki Goon. But, out of the sheer luck, Kanemaru was able to pick up the victory by pinning Bushi. That became like a big surprising move. But, what does this mean? Well, we could see... Kanemaru go to the top. Next up, we have, of course, a fight between, of course, the three different factions. Well, two factions, actually. We got Tenzon teaming up with the members of Chaos, consistent of Goto and Ishii, taking on House of Torture, consistent of Dick Togo, Yujiro, and, of course, Evil. Now, keep in mind, Chaos has been in war with House of Torture ever since they've been targeting them. But it was, of course, Tomo uh, Ito Ishii that knocked down Dick Togo out in the ground, forcing him to be pinned, giving an edge to Chaos in order to challenge for the, six, the never open weight six man tag team titles, which we will see later on in the, com- in the coming days or weeks. Next up, we got Taguchi, uh, Makabe, and Yano teaming up against members of Suzuki Goon. Now keep in mind, Minoru Suzuki has his sights set on Toriyano after being handcuffed at Wrestle King- Kingdom. But this time Yano brought the cage. But the surprising encounter ended with Taguchi pinning Taichi in this one. But Minoru Suzuki was not a happy camper, but instead beating Taguchi, he locked him up in the cage. So basically, Yano's cage was used for Suzuki's matter. But I thought it was funny. First Takahashi, first Michinuku, Taka Michinuku, now him. <laughs> Next up, we got Satoshi Kojima taking on the Great Okan. This is a very unusual thing for me. I. I don't know where the hell is Hanare and Hobbs 
well, I know where Osprey is, but uh, Great Okani is doing things on his own. But I thought this match was pretty good, but it was uh, Khan's the great denominator that finished the job by pinning Kojima. Next up, we got LIJ's Shingo, Sonata, and Naito taking on who was it? Blue Justice, Yuji Nagata, uh, Tanahashi, and of course, Okada. Now, as you know, Sonata has a chance for the IWGP United States title against Tanahashi and of course, Naito, the world title. It was a pretty good match. But it was Sonata that picked up the victory when he put the skull in on Nagata, forcing him to give up. He did not tap out. He obviously was not feeling it, but he gave up. Now, next match, we have Tiger Mask taking on Ghetto. Now, if you guys recall last time, Ghetto assaulted, brass mouthed Tiger Mask, but Tiger Mask got his revenge on Ghetto. So basically, we will, as you know, this history between Bullet Club and Tiger Mask and his tag team partner, Robbie Eagles, is far from over. But we will see them challenge for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Title real soon. Our next match is the battle of former friends, Yo and Sho taking on each other. But you know Sho's tactics. He brings in the wrench, and of course, wherever he goes... House of Torture is, no, is not far from behind. Now, you would have assumed Yo would have won. But no, it was too much. The numbers game was too much. But it was Sh uh, Evil that gave the helping hand for Show to win the match. However, it, the referee did not see that. So it went into favor to Show. But of course, Show is going to be laughing, making fun of him, saying that you just, just should quit when you had the chance. But it's not going to happen. Now our main event is the IWGP Junior Heavyweight ta uh, Championship between Master Wato and El Desperado. Now keep in mind, Wato tapped out Desperado. To be honest with you, there was a lot of people that said that Despi will retain the title because he's the fan favorite. And fortunately, I kind of agreed because Master Wato, he's starting to build up a bit, but... I don't know if he's ready to be in that situation to be put as the IWGP he uh, Junior Heavyweight Champion, but it was a good match. However, it was Despi who put um, Wato in his submission dos and forced him to tap out like completely. But it was a good match. I have to say Wato did the best he could, but this will not be the end for him. But the one thing I was a bit disappointed is that no one comes out to challenge Despi. But I do see Hiromu right there watching. But I don't know what that means. But we'll see what happens in the next events of New Japan. But right now, let's go with AEW Rampage. Okay. So we're back with AEW Rampage. So the first match is Rapongi Vice reunited, but this time in an AEW ring taking on the Young Bucks. Now, as you guys know, there's a bit of a history with these two teams. It dates back all the way to New Japan. Now you get to see it in an AEW ring. But I think my favorite moment is I did not expect this. Dan Housen shows up and he cursed the Young Bucks. And of course, you can hear Jericho saying, don't curse us. Do not say anything about him. Just don't curse us. We love you, Dan Housen. I thought it was a funny moment. But however, it was still not enough. As you know, Sosie Stooge is there too. But until they got the BTE triggered, there was no way Rocky could get out of it. But of course, Cutler had to be dumb enough to get some footage. And get involved with Orange Cassidy until he sucker punched him. Then, of course, the bunk Bucks showed up. Then Trent kicked their butts. Then Jay White shows up. Now, I don't know what's the deal. 
But I have that feeling that Jay White is going to screw Adam Cole. I don't know. He did the same thing to Kenny when he said, I'll join you. But he tricked him. But what does Kenny think of this if he was here? We will wait and see. Now, this was announced by Powerhouse Hobbs while doing commentary. It's now known that for the qualifying match, for the face of the revolution, it's going to be Powerhouse Hobbs versus Dante Martin. Now, as you know, Hobbs has been trying to get his hands on Hobbs. Martin ever since that match that they he lost to. So basically, this is a revenge match for them. So whoever wins will be in that ladder match. Now, our next interview we have is Brian Danielson. As you all know, last week, he offered to build a faction with John Moxley. However, he did say what he did with Punk was just, in his opinion... A one-eyed stand. I mean, we know these two guys know each other all the way from the independence. I mean, there's no wrong in that. But the real question still remains. Will Moxley accept it? That's the real question. You know, we don't know that. But however, it appears someone has something to say. And that is Matt Seidel, who thinks that he is not a good teacher. Who You see, as you know. Daniel Bryan believes that he, Lee Moriarty is better off with him than Matt Seidel. But of course, Lee Moriarty decided to put himself in the match against Daniel Bryan next week. Now, this is going to be a very interesting matchup. Now, our next match, we have Britt Baker. But to really my surprise, I did not see Jamie Hayter. Now, as you know, Jamie Hayter was a bit upset that no one told her about Mercedes Martinez being there to take care of Thunder Rosa. So it looks like it's possible we could see a chance Jamie Hayter could leave Britt Baker since she now has Mercedes Martinez. But her opponent was Robin a Renegade. I think she did a pretty good job, but however, it wasn't enough. Britt Baker won by pinfold. But she decided to punish Renegade with the lockjaw until Thunder Rosa showed up. Jamie Hayter shows up to get the clobber her. But of course, here comes Mercedes Martinez. Basically, this is becoming a battle like, no, I got her. No, I got her. That sort of thing. You know, like who's going to be Britt Baker even tried to play Peacemaker. But many fans are now speculating. Could this be the chance where Jamie Hayter splits from Britt Baker? We just got to wait and see when that day happens. Now, this next match, QT Marshall has been out in it against Hook. Thinking Hook owes him a thank you. So he called his best prize a student, Blake Lee. I have to say, it did not work. If you guys notice Hook, he's like, he's in, he's out. He has no care in the world. He just there to kick ass. That's what he does. So basically until he put him in that red drum, it was already over. And I think QT bit off more than he can chew. But <laughs> I don't know if this thing with QT is far from over, but we'll see when it, that day comes. Now our main event is the AEW World Tag Team Titles. As you know, the Gun Club has been asking for this match. So... Billy Gunn is full confident that his sons will dethrone Jurassic Express. But the real question is, can the Gun Club dethrone them? Well, we'll see what happens. But it was a good match. You know for a fact there's going to be some dirty tactics, especially coming from Billy. So, but the best moments happen is when Cage speared Billy, giving the chance for Jungle Boy to finish the job. But the surprising is how he ended it with the, uh, what's that one move? The kill switch, yeah. He pulled off the kill switch to win it. So basically, this is a very good victory. But now we're going to see who is next in line. Now that Gun Club is out, who's next? So, 
it was a pretty good show. I like it. You know, so, uh, certain stories are kind of interesting to follow, but we'll see what happens then. But I think right now, let's move on with 205 Live. All right. Last review we got is, of course, 205 Live. Ikemenjiro, along with Kushida, taking on Trick Williams, along with Carmelo Hayes. Now, this match shows Trick Williams what a powerhouse he could be. Now, we rarely see Trick Williams wrestle. He's always either tagging with Carmelo or he's by his side. But it did show a little bit more of what he could do when he's wrestling. Now, I keep saying that because we hardly see him wrestle. Last time I think we saw him wrestle, he lost against Dexter Lewis. But beating a guy like Ikemenjiro, who has more experience in him, probably fit him well. And that's exactly what he did. So, Trick Williams actually won this one. And it was very impressive. Lash Legend taking on right now uh, Erica Yan. Now, you know Lash Legend. She is a very much of a powerhouse. And that's exactly what she did until she bent Erica in half and forced her to tap out. So she will be impressive, but we'll see what happens then. Then finally, we have Joe Gazy taking on Zaya Quinn. Now, we haven't seen Zaya Quinn in weeks after that loss with Santos Escobar. But the real question does remain, how much ring, ring rust does he have? Well, he seems like he did a pretty good job, but however... You know for a fact, wherever Joe Gazy is, Harlan is not that far from behind. So that kind of sets in to exactly what takes place. So, however, Zion Quinn uh, dropped the ball, but Joe Gazy picked up the victory. So this could be a good moment for Joe Gazy, but Zion Quinn needs to get back on the horse and start winning again. So that's pretty much what we got, but I think it's time to move on with news updates. Recent developments has taken place in Pro Wrestling Noah. It was just told, Yohei has been kicked out of Los Perros de Mar. Now the decision was made by Nosawa Run Guy, saying that Yohei is just too darn nice. So he whacked him with a chair and beat him senselessly while he's being, you know, hold down by both Super Crazy, and uh, Kotaro Suzuki. Now keep in mind, this is not the first time that Yohei has been betrayed. He's already been betrayed many times before. First time was with Ogawa and, and Suzuki. Second time with Seki, uh, Seki Yoshioka, and now this. But, however, he was rescued by... The Noah Jr. Regular Army. Now this was a very unusual thing for them to do this. However. Yohei made the decision. And offered himself to join the Regular Army. So basically Kodoge decided to accept the offer. However. Hajime Ohara doesn't seem too happy. You see if you guys notice. The last faction before he joined Los Perros del Mar de Japón was full throttle, consistent of him, Hajime Ohara, and Seki Yoshiaka. Now, however, Yohei walked out of Ohara when this betrayal happened. So, what that goes to the mind of Ohara? What does he think? Can he trust him? That's a very good question. But, however, Ron Guy did state it there will be a new member integrated in Los Perros de Mar de Japón. So we just got to wait and see when that happens. Now, finally, 
another shocking development, but this time in stardom. Now, if you guys remembered, we saw Julia attacked Matsukurai and Waka Tsukiyama for months, telling Tam Nakano that she picked crappy wrestlers. However, it appears that Julia had something else in mind. She looked at Matsukurai like she's saying you're better off away from them. But the real question remain is, what was going through the mind of Matsukurai? She did have her last match with Tam Nakano a while ago before she was unable to compete due to poor health conditions. Um, she lost against Tam. Tam wanted to work with her, but she hadn't made a decision. But unfortunately, she and Unagi and Tam ended up in a big match against members of DDM consistent of Julia and Tekla and Mirai. That's when, of course, Maisa Kurai made her choice and left Cosmic Angels and joined DDM. And now the, the, now the DDM has eight members. Now, a lot of fans are talking, why are they expanding more members? Eight is enough. You know, it, it's like they keep increasing out of their own expense, out of the other expenses. But what does this mean for Cosmic Angels now that Matsukurai is gone? Their does are saying that right now we're seeing the rise of power with Oda Tai. They gain already new members. The, la the latest one was Momo. And then Stars. We had Momo Koko. But what does this mean for Cosmic Angels and Queen's Quest? Their does are saying Queen's Quest and Cosmic Angels should just merge and just be one big faction. I mean, I'm all for that. But I do have this distinct feeling that Cosmic Angels are going to align with themselves with the very unusual allies. If you guys don't know who I'm referring to, I'll tell you. That ally is none other than Prominence. Yes. The all-female faction that get themselves involved in hardcore and death matches. Now, you're probably going to say to yourselves, why them? Simple. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Prominence hates Julia. They hate her so much for betraying them when she left Ice Ribbon. Now, think about it. If they're going to fight against DDM and Julia... They need more reinforcements. And if Prominence does align themselves with Cosmic Angels, at least they will have friends they can count on. Now, you probably say, what would Julia think of it? Simple. Julia will probably tell Tam you can't trust Prominence because they invaded stardom. But if Tam does align herself with Prominence, then... She's not going to care what Julia thinks. She wants to crush her. So we'll see what, what happens from then on. Now, I'm only speculating this, but we'll see what happens. So I think that's pretty much it right now with the news updates. So let's call it a night. Well, I hope everybody enjoys this episode. So coming up, we have a two review. We got Choco Pro 200 with day one, which... It's going to be exciting. And of course, NWA USA. So that's pretty much what we got so far. But for now, I'll see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day.